and this headlamp is not yet modified enough. I've already replaced the super dim red LEDs with phosphor yellow LEDs, much brighter and much more useful. I've spray painted the black reflectors using a silver paint, because it surely makes a lot of sense for a reflector to be black, but even the main LED is not going to be saved from my modifications. This one is super cool white, which I don't like. I want to swap it for some warm white LED, which might also happen to be more efficient, which would be definitely a great bonus. So let's open it again, I unscrew the screws and here's the internals. This reflector comes off and here's the LED in it. It's definitely a good idea to test if the reflector can fit over the new LEDs. It can. They seem to be actually a bit bigger, the heat sink of them, not the actual emitters. They also have some of these emitters without the heat sink, but it's the same efficiency and color temperature. And it would be just more complicated to get it in. So I'm using the ones with the heat sink already on them. I even thought about a yellow one, but this one has a lower voltage drop. It's less efficient than the white LEDs and this is the standard yellow, which is quite monochromatic. It has quite a narrow spectrum, which is quite different from the phosphor yellow LEDs. And these have a much wider spectrum. These phosphor yellow LEDs could be almost called very warm white LEDs. I'm going to choose from these two. One is 1 watt, one is 3 watts. But it doesn't matter much because it's going to run at 1 watt anyway in this one. But of course more headroom is better. I'm trying to compare these. Not that you can see it in the camera, but one has a slightly greenish tint. One a slightly pinkish or orangish tint. They're different makers. Slightly different phosphor, I guess. The efficiency is super close. I have to resolder one of the connections to the battery holder to get to the LED. And that's it. Here's the LED, which is actually smaller than these significantly. And that's quite a difference. The emitter is the same size, so it should fit. The heatsink is even a little bit thicker. Besides being larger. Is it going to fit? It actually seems to work, there is enough space for the bigger heat sink under the board. Comparing the old one with one of the new ones, it's 200 milliamps. I actually don't see much difference in the efficiency. About the same brightness, but the old one is much much cooler. The difference is actually bigger than it looks in the camera. And here you can see the voltage drops of these LEDs at 200 milliamps. And the new ones actually drop a bit less voltage, about 0.1 volt, which will make them draw a bit more current, because there's going to be more voltage on the series resistance. There's no series resistor in the headlamp, but the internal resistance of the batteries and the on-state resistance of the tiny MOSFET does the job of the resistor in series. And drawing a bit more current isn't a problem. They have a bigger heat sink and this one is 3 watts. If I want the batteries to last longer, I can always use the lower mode. And having a bigger heat sink, you will run at a lower temperature, which might increase the efficiency a bit too, because the efficiency of LEDs goes down with temperature, so this one with a small heat sink could be less efficient when it reaches its operating temperature. The difference between the heat sinks isn't negligible, definitely. And the phosphors in the LEDs look a bit different. In this one the phosphor actually protrudes a bit more into the front. And this actually changes the behavior of this reflector. With this one it's actually a wider beam, with this one it's a much narrower beam. The phosphor is probably closer to the focal point of this parabola. And I noticed that this one has a better color rendering. This one makes my hand a bit green, a green tint. This one not. My hand looks completely natural under this one. Under this one it's a bit greenish, like under a mercury vapor lamp. I also wonder what's the difference between 1 watt LEDs and 3 watt LEDs when they look absolutely the same, completely identical. I'm putting a couple microamps in them, and it seems to be the same chip size in it. Both tested at 50 milliamps. The difference in the voltage drop is just 4 millivolts. The 1 watt LED from the other maker actually does have a slightly smaller chip in it. These are about 3200 kelvins. I'm also waiting for LEDs which say 2200 kelvins, even warmer. Okay, the 3 watt one is in. This one might have a slightly lower efficiency, but more power headroom, better color rendering, and it will make a wider beam. It seems to work. The reflector goes on. And as I expected, it draws more current than with the original LED. With fresh batteries actually 0.43 amps. Well, this would be actually too much for the 1 watt LED, which is up to 350 milliamps at most. The low mode. The yellow mode. 
And of course, the operating current of these things is quite unpredictable. It depends on the state of charge of the batteries. It also randomly changes with the contact resistances in this battery holder. Also, the battery voltage 3.6 volts is quite close to the voltage drop of the LED, so just a small difference in its voltage drop influences the current. A lower voltage drop LED draws more current, of course. And also, the internal resistance of the battery has a huge effect here, because it's a big part of the current limiting resistance. And the internal resistance depends on the state of deterioration of the battery. And the internal resistance also depends on the type and state of charge, but... Let's actually measure this one. 50 milliohms. This one is not deteriorated yet. And these colorful ones. Just 34 milliohms. Very nice. But if I test some older ones, after several years... 300 milliohms. This is already deteriorating. This one is... 800 milliohms, bloody hell, that's a rotten. And this one over one ohm, that's completely rotten. And testing time, high power, low power, yellow, blinking yellow, off. And the beam is wider than it was, but I shouldn't put the one watt LED into it, which would make the beam narrower by the shape of its phosphor, because the current would be too much for it. Unless I put an extra resistor in a series. I can also test it with the super warm white 2200 Kelvin LED, but it will probably take about two months to arrive. That's it, and if you like my videos, please consider subscribing, supporting this channel on Patreon or using the thanks button. And big thanks to all of you who keep this channel running.